All right, we're going to return to this example one last time. This time using an arbitrary number of rectangles. So we have our sort of partition machinery sitting right here. So remember that delta x will be right endpoint 4 minus left endpoint 0 over n. So just 4 over n, OK? Um, xi will be the left endpoint 0 plus i times delta x, which in this case is just i times 4 over n. So it will look like this, 4i over n. Remember, those are the right endpoints of the intervals in my partition. So I can calculate f of xi, and I'm going to get um, 16i over n minus, square that, 16i squared over n squared. Okay. All right. So now we set up our sort of general Riemann sum, right? So our Riemann sum for this function f um, using this uniform partition with n rectangles is going to be the sum i going from 1 to n of f of xi, so 16i over n minus 16i squared over n squared times delta x, which is 4 over n. Okay, So I'm going to rearrange this using properties of summation. Multiply the 4 over n, so 4 times 16, 64. Um, 64, put 1 there. And I'm going to have i over n times n. So I have i, actually you can put the n squared out front, can't we? Because the sum doesn't actually care about the n. It's a common multiple. Right? And then minus 16 times 4, another 64, n squared times n. And cubed, well, that's a common factor we take out. i equals 1 to n of i squared. Right? Those same summation formulas coming up again. So this time, 64 over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2. Think about like when we were plugging 1,000 in, how complicated this felt. But now, it's actually not so bad. It's somehow easier working with the formulas rather than the numbers. Okay? All right. So here you do a little bit of cleaning up. So what I'm going to do is you know, we can cancel the test 32. Cancel that, right? Uh, I can cancel this with one of those two ends. Um, what I'm going to get is this. is 32 okay, times n plus 1 over n. Okay. Minus, okay, 64 over 6, I guess I can simplify that to 32 over 3. Uh, now, those two, there's two n's left here, right, n squared. I'm going to write it like this, n plus 1 over one of the n's, and then 2n plus 1 over the other one. Okay, so there's the result in general. You know, if I was going to plug in, you know, 16 rectangles or 1,000, I could plug it into there. Um, let me do one more step. 32 times 1 plus 1 over n minus 32 over 3 times 1 plus 1 over n times 1 plus, or sorry, times 2 plus 1 over n. Okay? Now, I could multiply this out and, and simplify if I wanted to, but um, what I want to do is point out um, that actually there's a, there's a cool thing when you write it like this. Um, these, you know, we, we know what's going to happen to 1 over n, right? If n is going to infinity, um, 1 over n, right, the bigger n gets, the smaller 1 over n gets. So this 1 over n is kind of an error term, right? It's telling you, um, you know, how this sum depends on n, right? And, and so we can actually sort of see what's going to happen 
if we let n go to infinity. Uh, if n goes to infinity, these error terms are actually going to go away, right? And what we get is this. We get that the limit as n goes to infinity of this Riemann sum is just going to be, well, 32 times 1, 32 over 3 times, well, 1 times 2, okay? Um, and so in the end, what we get, so that's 32. If I factor out the 32, I'm left with 1 minus 2 thirds, so 1 third. So the whole thing is just 32 over 3 as the value of the integral, okay? Um, great. So that's it. So it's a little slightly less than 11, right? Just under 11. So those initial approximations we were doing, not so bad, right? Midpoint rule gave us 11 with like four rectangles, I think. We are off by, by a third, right? But now um, we get, well, this, this, if you think of what this is, right? If we, if we accept it as n goes to infinity, the approximation becomes exact. This actually is equal to the value of that definite integral, right? Cool. Now, of course, that's, that's a lot of work to get one integral, and you might be worried, like, what if once the functions get more complicated, like, am I going to have to do this all the time? And, of course, the answer is no. Um, in the next section, we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is going to make our lives a whole lot easier. Um, that's coming up pretty soon.